Welcome, this is 49C6 and it's entitled Shockwaves. So let's see what's going on. Uh, we're in a section to do with sound, but we can get some information about this by looking at boats leaving wakes as they travel through uh, over the surface of a water. And I think you know the faster that the boat goes, the the, the narrower the wake is. Uh, to get a wake, you've got to have a boat that goes faster than the speed of the ripples on the surface of the water. Um, and that's the game we're going to play with sound. Uh, if I look at this first diagram, I can imagine dropping a pebble into a pond and then another pebble and I'll see concentric rings move outwards from where I drop the pebbles in. They're concentric because the, the position where I drop the pebbles is constant. The energy travels out in all directions from the same point. If I move to the right, then when I drop the first pebble, I get a concentric ring. And then when I drop the second pebble, I've got a different center to that ring and the ring's not as big because it's not as much time to spread out and I can even imagine dropping a third pebble just before I draw this diagram and I see I see a sequence and I can see a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an edge to that sequence and then if I imagine going even faster I get a, a, a more pointed arrowhead um, so this is when there's no motion. This is when you're traveling somewhat faster than the speed of the ripples on the water. And this is when you're traveling even faster. There's one diagram I didn't draw here. What happens if you're traveling but not as fast as the speed on the water? Well, if I drop my first pebble in, by the time I look, the ripples got to that position. Now I've moved slightly to one side so I'm, I've dropped my first pebble there. Let's say I drop my second pebble there. I'm here and then my third pebble there I'm here. So the ripples are not concentric rings but they're not forming an arrowhead. If I travel just at the speed of the ripples going over the surface of the water I drop my first pebble and I'm there. When I drop my second pebble and look, it looks like that and my third pebble would look like that. Can you see how I'm building up a lot of energy here, a lot of ripple? So here I'd have a high frequency side because of basically a Doppler effect and here would be a low frequency side. Here there'd be a really low frequency side, but this wouldn't be high frequency, it'd be a bang. All that energy would arrive at, at once. And in these cases here, if I'm positioned here, I'd hear a bang. So there's a, there's a, a shock wave that for, as a, a, an arrow for its shape. So that's what happens with water and that's what can happen with sound. Consider the source of oscillation moving through a medium. If the velocity of the source exceeds the velocity of the wave in the medium, we get a shock wave. All that energy that normally you'd hear as a hum builds up and you hear it all at once as a bang. There's a couple of things we can do with this. One is that we can characterize what's called a Mach angle and the other is we can characterize what's called a Mach number. Um, people are more familiar with the Mach number, so let's look at that first. The Mach number is the ratio of the speed of the source to the speed of the wave. So in air it would be the speed of sound, on water it would be the speed of a ripple over the surface of the water. So the Mach number is the velocity of the source over the velocity of sound in air. And because it's got velocity over velocity, it's dimensionless, but we tend to call it Mach. You know, I'm doing Mach 5, Mach 7, something like that. We don't tend to talk about Mach numbers that are less than one. If you're going slower than the speed of sound in air, I suppose you could say Mach 0.5, but we don't tend to talk about that. 
And then the other thing we should talk about is the Mach angle. So look at this diagram. So I dropped, if you like, a pebble. And there's the ripple. And I'm traveling so fast that by the time this ripple has occurred, I'm way over here. I've gone a long way. So I have the velocity of, in this case, the ripple on the water, V, times the time. And I have the velocity of the source times the time. And they're different because the velocity of the source is bigger than the velocity of the ripple. I get this this effect. Can you see there's a right angle here between the shock wave uh, there? And so I see I have a right triangle. And I see that sine theta is equal to Vt, the velocity of the wave in the medium, uh, times the time, and Vs, the velocity of the source, times the time. And so I get V over Vs, which is uh, um, a numerical value, and I can work out the angle from that. Um, notice they're opposite ways around, and <laughs> uh, you just got to look at your diagram and, and work it out. It's like, I, I suppose you can remember it, but it's easy to get confused backwards and forwards. So look, at, draw a diagram, and you'll get it. Uh, oh, the other thing is, you actually, you can't have a sine theta bigger than 1. So if you're getting a sine theta bigger than 1, you know you've got it upside down. But for the Mach number, you know, you've got to figure it out. Um, okay, let's have a look at this. So I see uh, a jet plane travels through air at... 335 meters per second. The speed of sound in air is 300 meters per second. There's a shock wave. There's a sound wave got to there. This is V equals, and this is V source. Not V sound, this is V source. Be careful about that. So then it says, what is the Mach angle? The Mach angle is the angle from the straight through direction to the shock wave. So the Mach angle will be sine theta equals the opposite, which is 300 over the adjacent, which is, which is over the hypotenuse, I'm sorry, which is 335. So theta is equal to the inverse sine of 300 over 335 and this equals I get my calculator and I can be in radians if I want but I just got to make sure that I write down my answer is in radians most of the time we work in degrees and I'll say uh, 300 divided by 335 enter then I go second sign second answer and I'm going to get 63.6 degrees so that's going to be 63.6 degrees which is 64 degrees and then for the second part I say what is the speed of the jet expressed in Mach number so Mach number is equal to the velocity of the source over the velocity of sound in air. So that would be 335 over 300 which equals 1.12 Mach. So there we have it. Mach number and Mach angle.